I'm planning an experiment that will take place outside, and it will require taking two digital multimeters outside to record measurements. I have several quality DMMs that I've spent money on, and I'm not really keen to take them outside, where they might get exposed to dirt or dust and moisture. Although they're supposed to be able to take the elements, I really don't want to test that. So I looked around in the uh, online marketplace for a low-cost meter that I could take outside. And um, you know what was in the back of my mind was something that I wouldn't go into mourning if it got destroyed on the one hand, while um, I, I wouldn't be embarrassed to have it on my bench uh, if it survives uh, on the other hand. There are many meters, mostly that originate in China, that are available online. I found one, for example, that claimed to be true RMS. It did many types of measurements, uh, and it cost less than $20. I suspect it wouldn't last more than a week, so I wasn't interested in that class of an instrument. The parameters of my search were cost, capability, and auto-ranging. If you're going outdoors and trying to do 20 things at once with high voltage, you really don't want to be changing the range switch on a DMM. I also wanted a brand that had some favorable reviews online and wasn't completely unknown. What I decided upon was a Tech Power TP8268. Tech Power sells a variety of electronics equipment, most of which are reviewed favorably online. Moreover, at least one video blogger has a review that began appropriately skeptical, uh, but finished up with a very favorable impression of a, a different Tech Power DMM model. So, with that, I figured it might be worthwhile to look at this particular model in a somewhat systematic way. This is not going to be a full review, nor is it a comparison, and it is definitely not going to be a teardown. I want to use these things coming up, and I want to make sure that they work. So, let's get started. Just looking at the unit overall, this is a, a pretty typical multimeter, uh, independent of cost. Uh, you know, it's uh, auto-arranging. The switch uh, feels all right. It's not hugely crisp, but uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel too bad. The probes are, um, they're, you know, they're not great, but they're not, they're not too bad. I mean, they're definitely usable. They're a little bit stiff. The display is nice and large. Uh, it's very easy to, to see. Uh, it's very easy on the eyes. It's uh, nice and crisp. And the backlight, even though we're under the bench lights here, is very easy to see, and it uh, certainly helps to read the display. This meter will measure DC volts, AC volts, it will measure resistance, it will measure AC and DC current, it goes down to the microamp range with current readings. Uh, it also has a frequency counter that will count up to 10 megahertz. It has a continuity tester, an audible continuity tester. It will test diodes, and it will measure capacitance as well. The accuracy isn't anything to write home about, but you wouldn't expect that at, um, at this price range. Uh, the accuracy for DC volts, depending on the range, the highest accuracy is half a percent plus two least significant digits. Uh, and that's for uh, millivolts up through 400 volts. For the 1,000 volt range, the accuracy is eight-tenths of a percent plus two digits. For AC, you have kind of similar accuracy. The uh, highest uh, accuracy mode for the millivolt range through 400 volts is 0.8%, and above that, up into the 750 volt range, it's 1%, and that's actually plus three digits. Uh, kind of similar sorts of accuracy for frequency and resistance, so no, no surprises there. Entirely accurate for service grade work, and so there we go. One note as I uh, look through the user's manual, which is you know, nothing really to write home about, but um, it serves its purpose. Just a note to manufacturers who write and translate out of a native language into English. Whenever you write for megahertz, millohertz, that's never a good sign. It really doesn't lead to a lot of confidence, uh, but it is what it is. So we can check uh, using a, a very nice voltage and current standard uh, that also has some high precision resistors built into it as well. We can check at least the uh, DC voltage performance or, or accuracy. So I'm just going to, with these clips, clip on the leads to the DC voltage. And this should read uh, 5.00 
and there's another zero past that uh, in terms of, uh, of the actual true voltage. And what you see here is we're reading 4.98 volts instead of 5.00. That's actually fine. That is within specifications. The spec on this voltage range is 0.5% of the measurement plus two least significant digits. So 0.5% of 5 volts in this case would be 0.025 volts, which on the display showing two digits to the right of the decimal point would round to 0.03 volts. So if you include the uh, 0.02 for the plus or minus two least significant digits, 5 volts to be in spec on this voltmeter should produce a reading of uh, anywhere between 4.95 and 5.05 volts. So this meter is in spec. I think it's also instructive just to see how these uh, agree to look at how two meters fresh out of the box agree. So I'm going to do that with the second meter. I'm just going to put the clips on here and attach those to the voltage standard as well. Okay, and I'm gonna turn this on. And uh, you see that uh, this one actually does read uh, 5.00 or 5.01, a little bit of fluctuation going on there. So both of these meters are, uh, you know, certainly agree to within specifications, and interestingly, the, uh, the meter on the left is, is changing just a little bit, but good show for the, the accuracy and the uh, consistency of the DC voltage. So let's look at resistance next here. So we're just going to now look at this, and uh, there are many different... Uh, resistors we can look at. So for the 100 uh, ohm resistor, we're reading uh, 100.4 ohms uh, here. And we're just going to take this off and look at the other meter now as well. And we see that we get 100.5. Certainly very good agreement between both the meters. I'm just going to get rid of these clips now and go back to the first one and we get 100.5, 100.6, and with the other meter, we get 100.5 as well. So they're certainly consistent. They're also uh, within spec. Let's look, at, um, let's look at a 10K resistor. And so uh, we get 10.00 kilo ohm on that meter uh, and on the meter whoops to the left we will read whoops if I can keep it on there we will read again uh, 10 kilo ohms and now let's move up to the 100 kilo ohm resistor and we see 100.2 kilo ohm certainly within specifications there and on the meter on the right get 100.1 kilo ohm. So no worries there. The uh, meter doesn't respond terribly quickly, but again, at this price point, um, certainly, certainly no problems. And now let us look at, uh, let's go back here and let's look at current. So I'm just going to change this to current now. Um, and I'm going to change the probe to the current uh, current plug on both of these. And this standard is for 1.000 milliamps, uh, which I've measured on my BK Precision bench meter to be, to be true. So let's look at this now and see what we measure on the tech power. And we get 1.00 milliamps. Fantastic. And uh, now for the other meter, and we get 0 0.99, uh, essentially you know, one milliamp as well. So again, both these meters are uh, in spec and they both agree reasonably well with one another fresh out of the box.
So, so far, so good. I uh, wanted to stick the leads in the mains and uh, just show that or verify that uh, you know, the meter uh, doesn't malfunction or anything when I do that and that I get a reasonable reading. And in fact, there we are at 120, 121 volts AC. And that's what I would expect out of this meter uh, for this location. This is, this is typical. The specification for the TechPower 8268 DMMs is that the DC and AC impedance is uh, 10 mega ohms. So let's uh, see what the resistance of these uh, voltmeters measures on a uh, BK Precision bench meter uh, just set to measure ohms. And you can see that we're measuring uh, just under 9 mega ohms. Uh, so that's certainly acceptable and uh, in the range of other meters that uh, have on the bench. Let's just do the, the twin measurement. Uh, this is of the other meter and um, you see you get the same thing. So high impedance, uh, that's good and certainly in line with what we would expect. So lastly I wanted to look at the resistance and continuity. Let's just touch the tips together of the leads and you see that you uh, you know get kind of typical resistance uh, we should be able to zero that out with the uh, with the rel so there's that but now let's uh, let's look at the leads in a little bit more uh, depth that's instead of crossing them up there on the little ridge let's cross them down here and uh, you see generally no problems until you start kind of moving them around. And then it's, yeah, not, not the best. Uh, but, you know, the leads are, are what they are. Let's now go to um, function and look at the continuity tester. And uh, that'll give you a little bit more insight into the uh, leads. And you can see that, you know, it works. It's it's fine for what it is. Uh, it's not the best. Uh, but but let's just see if we change leads now. So let me take the stock leads off, and instead use aftermarket leads. These are Probe Master leads, and I quite like them. Uh, these leads cost almost as much as the meter. <laughs> and uh, so here are the ProMaster leads. And you see they're not nearly as scratchy. Right. And let's just go back to regular, whoops, I don't want to measure capacitance. Right, so you know, very quick, actually now, uh, much quicker than it was with the uh, old leads, in fact. Uh, so you see the uh, leads really do uh, matter. They're usually worth investing a little bit of money in. But uh, so getting back to the Tech Power package as it comes out of the box, the leads are, I would say, barely adequate. Uh, and uh, overall, you know, the meter is, um, you know, I, it's kind of minimally, minimally acceptable. It's got a, a reasonable feel. You know, for the price, I, I quite like it, actually. Uh, I haven't shown, but uh, I did test the frequency meter, the frequency counting meter, and in fact, it does go up to 10 megahertz, and it appears to be accurate. You know, it is what it is. I think the, this was $30. Maybe in a future review, we will look at, uh, you know, we'll take it apart and look at the fuses and uh, the workmanship inside. Uh, certainly, I wouldn't use this, um, you know, probing around high voltage in, in an oscilloscope or anything like that. But for low voltage, uh, I think I think this is fine. Anyway, I won't go on. Uh, Tech Power TP8268 seems like a nice meter. We'll see how it lasts. Uh, thank you for watching. If you found this useful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you have comments, please put them down below. I will link in uh, at least one other video review of a Tech Power meter product that uh, was very favorable. Thanks a lot.